this is so good. Uh, after service today, you could, you could if, you, if the Lord's stirring in your heart, I'm really looking forward to Wednesday to just see things lined up that are coming in Israel's time. And we're, we're right now form, form, uh, in the formation of a team going to Israel the last week of February, first week of March, to, with the assignment to prepare the way for the Lord. We need, uh, there, there's, Jesus spoke of, you will not see me again until you learn to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and to remove the stumbling stones, and, and just a part of something the Holy Spirit's obviously stirring, but we are, we're being asked to come and be a vo voice to that. If you'd like to join us at about, about one o'clock, maybe a little before, in room six, are we going to be in? Seven. seven. Room seven. Uh, today's the day we've asked people to be praying, bring their deposits, $500 deposit, get started. Uh, but if, if God stirred in your heart, get a hold of Mac and Kathy, come and join us at the meeting. You're welcome to. All right. Turn with me anywhere in the Bible you'd like. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Let's go to Psalm 68. I want to show you a couple of spots there. Hmm. Psalm 68 is a, uh, I don't know where I'll start. Yeah, let's just start verse 1. I've got Kim. You know, some, Kim is the, I mean, the guy can move the Bible on the screen better than I can move it in my hands. So I'll talk about, yeah, thank Kim. Bless you, bro. So here we go. Uh, let God arise. <laughs> you know, it's, God goes up in the shout. When we raise the voice, when we rise in the shout, when we glory in the shout, when the decibels go up in these moments of concerted uh, extolling, God goes up. And when God goes up, when he stands up, when he rises, all of a sudden enemies start scattering. Enemies of our mind, of our emotions, of our families, our friends, our businesses. Many times we're not aware of how the enemy hoard, you know, collects himself to, to oppress us. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire. I love this one because we've all seen wax melt, right? So let the wicked perish at the presence of the Lord. Think of the kind of power and glory and light and life that God carries. And when he starts to rise, he does this demonstration of himself. We call it demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. And, and we just start to come and be carried up with it. But let the righteous be glad. Bummer. I can't be sad. If I'm going to go up with him, I'm going to get glad why a lot of times, pray for Diana, I don't think there's a harder job in the world than to collect a bunch of Christians going through life and say, let's rejoice together. Because Christians tend to go, what's there to rejoice about? My life is worse than my neighbor and they don't know God. Well, if, duh, they don't, the devil doesn't care about them. He cares about us shutting us down. And God is even more excited in making us like him. And he brought his son through hell, so he figures, why not bring us too? <laughs> because if you're victorious, if you come through, you're victorious, then you're no, more, no longer are you have to be afraid. So he has this way of pulling us up. Tell your neighbor, God's going to pull you up. We prayed for Lebanon today. We prayed and declared the Lord's going to walk over the, watch the land and make it the beauty of Lebanon again. Back like in the Bible. Back in the Bible. Shabbat. Amen. So, let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Now, you wouldn't have that in the scripture if it was something that was dependent upon something you and God were enjoying, experiencing, life was supporting, your, uh, your, your own life merited. It's a command, and any command in the scripture is given that we can respond, so therefore in the respond comes the resource. Does that make sense? We can say to our soul, rejoice. We can say, rejoice. No, don't just rejoice. Rejoice exceedingly. And 
our soul goes, I, not, not, too many people. I'm not sure. We have all the reasons. I'm still getting healed. I've been traumatized. You know, all of the stuff. But, but let it be known to you today and to all of us in Jubilee and everyone online, if you want to rejoice, you can. No devil in hell, no demon, no circumstance, no situation in life has the ability to shut you down. Because since Jesus has been raised from the dead, it says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. He says, to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. So, there's a, we, we go up. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. We're not praising each other. <laughs> How beautiful we are. It's all about me, me, me. If, if that's, then we, are, we have a big reason to be depressed. I mean, look around. Look at yourself. I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> you know, we think of, you know, no, we're, we're talk, we sing praises to his name. That name above every name. When we sing that the name, all the chains break, we get the opportunity to use our faith and say, well, since I am singing truth, I now step inside of the experience of truth and now let the chains that are abiding and trying to constrict my movement break off. See, we get to experience our praise. It's not something we're just doing there intellectually or, or beautifully. That was Europe's deal. Let's go. The rest of the world gets large and loud and bumpy and expressive. I mean, Europe's beautiful. I love classical music, but we, we kind of just like brought it all in tight little boxes and put them in Mercedes. <laughs> but, but there's just movement that Jesus is. Have you ever noticed that when you're depressed, you don't move? You find a nice place on the couch, get the remote call for pizza and go on a binge on Netflix and then later you go wow I don't feel any better <laughs> and you know there's time for that stuff there's time just to say you know I've just got to check out because I'm too serious too focused and too hard but whoa what happens when we engage you will find your your hands start moving they start talking and your feet, and your, your eyes, and your face, and your, everything starts to come alive because it's just the nature of God. He just starts expressing himself. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him. I love the word extol. That means just find a way to get him bigger. Now that you made him bigger, make him even bigger. Now that you made him even bigger, make him even bigger. That's the reason we have synonyms, different words for the same thing. That's why we have adjectives to describe the glorious noun called God. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you a secret. I shouldn't tell you this because then you won't need me. <laughs> You'll be able to do this on your own at home. <laughs> Find yourself in a hard place. Praise the name of Jesus. Raise your voice. Give him present. Give him acclaim hit the truth about his name. And see if that truth does not start to saturate your soul and shift the way you feel about yourself and the situation. Because truth trumps the lie. And the lie is that you can do it without God. And the truth is you cannot do it without God. And because we have God, then he's the answer. By his name, Yah. So, you want to know? Yah! Let's all say Yah! Yah! Hi, Yah! Hi, y'all. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I just, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. And rejoice before him. There is a strength in joy that someone said, I heard, and I thought, ever since I heard it, I said, I say it. I asked for, I prayed for strength, and he gave me joy. Because joy is strength. We want the, the, the product and he says I'll give you the, the reason strength comes from joy a father of the fatherless 
The defender of the widows is God in his holy habitation. You find yourself, we find ourselves in any of these settings. We're all fatherless to some degree. None of us have had a perfect father. Only one perfect father, only one God who's perfect. So we're all needing the places that we are to be refathered in by our father. We've all found ourselves without in broken covenant and without the support of that which was to always be there and vulnerable and lost. And if we are specifically a widow in the presence of God and in the praises of God, God begins to say, I am a defender. And if we believe that, it starts to happen. So it's, it's like a content, it's coming into agreement. God sets the solitary in families. Nobody's left alone in the kingdom. And nobody is, is, is excluded because of the failure of the rest of the body. You just press into God. I guarantee you will start having God fo force the world to respond to you. Because there's nothing more attractive in the, in the, in the earth than someone that is sufficient in God. Satisfied, blessed, joyful. You, you just start attracting people. And you're, it's, 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 it's like agreeing with what God says he does, even when we're not seeing him do it, causes what we, he says he does to start to happen before we see it. He, but he says he brings the bound out into prosperity. This is all happening in the praise service. This has already been happening while we've been together. Now, I know some of us have been around the kingdom so long, you're going, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really happening. We don't, we, there's no ulterior motive. I mean, we're not trying to get to a place so that we have a level of holiness so God can move. He doesn't need any of us to be any more holy than we are. Frankly, he knows how holy we can get. And it's about, he said, I'll just count on Jesus to cover that. You know, he's not expecting us to get more dedicated and more zealous and more like, you know, uh, I'll kill somebody for God. He's already got enough people like that. Doesn't need any more of that. Mean people. You know, just, just let Jesus be and we start moving into and we start going, okay, here goes prosperity. It's moving. Solitary is starting to put in families. Here come the widows. There's a defense mechanism breaking open. It all happens through sound. It all happens through revelation of Jesus. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. So that is that op option we all carry. No. Not, not yet. Not now. Oh God, when you, okay, let me, let me take you to, let me take you to further into that chapter, just uh, verse 24 and 25. They have seen your comings or your procession, oh God, the procession of my God my king, into the sanctuary. The singers went before. Oh, I love Jubilee. You're getting your voice back. Dude, you're starting to sing again. I mean, you got, I mean we've all soaked so much, we're like a bunch of, you know, pickles. We're starting to be sound makers instead of soakers, you know. I mean, there's nothing, I love soaking, you know. Bless God for soakers. And I, like, I, I can get quieter than most people when I'm alone. But there's something about the movement of sound outward that's so pleasing to the Father. And the singing, the singing. So thanks for singing. Yeah. Sing loud. Yeah. You know, that could be a bumper sticker. Sing loud. <laughs> you know, when you sing into life, sing loud. The singers went before. The players on instruments followed after. They were the, actually, when you read the Hebrew, they were the, they were the tail end. You had the singers, and you put all those dancing ladies up there. Hallelujah. Thank God for our dancing ladies. Thank God for them. Everyone, get, you know, and dare say we again, go back, bring your tambourines. I mean, let's get risky now. Warfare. Breaking, breaking, loosing, releasing, freeing people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's the Pharisees that sit around and go, I don't know. It's not in order. Have you ever seen a dance in order? Dear God, unless it's ballet. Freedom! 
Limbs move, sound, whirls, twirls, bang, 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 bang. And then among them, the maidens with the timbrels, the tambourines, bless God in the congregation, the Lord from the fountain of Israel. Something deep. Now take, go with me to Psalm 42 real quick. Praise is a weapon. Praise is a means to, uh, to come into agreement with God when our feelings will not allow us to accept what God has already done. Praise will project us into a place we cannot mentally assent to or physically get to. Praise will activate faith like probably nothing else because you have to start uh, demonstrating something to an invisible someone with an expectancy that a reward will come because you're responding. Praise delights the heart of God. And Psalm 42, I, we don't have time to go through the whole thing. And Diana quoted a portion but Psalm 42, I, I, I quote, the, I, I titled this for myself, this is the intercessor psalm. Because this, this psalm takes you through almost every stage of a spirit-seeking believer. You know, we are a different breed. Look around, you know. You're a different group. You're an eclectic group. We've got every nation here, ages. One thing in common, something, somewhere, sometime, Jesus captured us, and we're in pursuit of him. And it's not just pursuit like, you know, I mean, we, we went beyond normal pursuit. We're in like super pursuit. I really want this God. I mean, I, really, I don't, I just, I mean, I really want, I really think there's something more of him that I can have. I want him. I'm in. Or someone told us, hey, we need to pray. Okay, I'll pray. Or someone else came in and said, this is a, this is a moment of time. And we just, we, we, we've engaged. But we'll find ourselves in different situations because we engaged. And that's for the struggle. As the deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. Why would, God collects us toward himself. We respond and then we find ourselves almost as though he's not as tangible as he was when we responded so that our patience might become, grow up and get perfect and our strength might increase. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me, where is your God? See, you can have someone else start to write a song on top of your song. They can rewrite your song. The song of sorrow, the song of separation, the song of... Where is God? That's what the cross is called. The cross is not a silent place. Because there will be those who will say, he trusted God, let him save him. You, come down from the cross and we'll believe you. And there's this other sound. My tears have been my food day and night. They continually say, where is your, where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept the pilgrim feast. So every one of us have been in that moment. Have you ever had one of those where you just like, I was glad when they say, let us go up to the house of the Lord. And you were greeted with others who were in the same moment and were moving and advancing. Yet it's not happening now. And now we're trying to find how do I find my way back. And here's what happens in, the, in those seasons. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? David talked to himself. He talked to his soul. So why are you carrying these emotions you just expressed? Why are you depressed? Why are you cast down? Why are you disquieted? It's just so much in those, those words. Hope in God. He's your praise. He's the salvation of your countenance. Countenance. He is the salvation. He is your praise. Hope in him. Come alive. Reawaken. The advice he's giving his soul. I, I was just, this weekend, I remember just, you know, you just collect. Have, have you noticed that your thoughts don't need to be told what to think? Has anybody noticed that? That somehow thoughts just will find, start their own story? 
Have you noticed that they can get worrisome, stressful? They love fear. They love to, you know, either think what might be happening or wish what didn't happen. They, oh. And, and you, all you have to do is kind of be unoccupied with your thoughts. And they take off somewhere. And, and next thing you know, your emotions are following your thoughts. And now you've got your emotions and your thoughts, and they're all off in the doghouse, and you're just going, whoa, I wish I could get out of here. And then your thoughts team up with your emotions and say, well, there's, there's every right reason you are here. And, and next thing you know, you're stuck. But did you, so I was just in one of those funks. I was in the driveway, and I thought, well, this is stupid. I'm going to praise God. And my soul said, well, what are you going to praise him about? I said, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to praise him because if I praise him, I'll feel better. And my feelings said, well, how can that be honest? You don't feel good right now. You've got to be honest. I don't want to be honest with these feelings. These are just feelings. They're just like soul persper perspiration. They're, they're odor, body, they're soul odors. So I started praising the Lord. And sure enough, I started feeling better. Sure enough, I started believing what I was singing. And it isn't, you don't, I don't go, I mean, I don't sound like Diana when I start singing. Or really any of these guys. I, in fact, a lot of times it's more speaking than singing. It's just opening my mouth. Jesus, your Lord, your King, I praise you. And usually, if I don't know what it is that I'm to praise him, I'll praise him for the opposite of what I'm feeling. You carry me. You are my, you're my support. You're my victory. I will not have to fear. The Lord is my strength. And then some usually Holy Spirit's so good to bring scriptures with that. If you point yourself in the direction you want to go, the Holy Spirit will supply the, 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 the language, the words, the promises. And then you just... And again, I'm in my open garage on my suburban home in Cal Camarillo. I'm not just sitting out there making a big loud noise. I am just using my little tongue to shift where my thoughts are going and my emotions are feeling back to God so that he can tell me how I should feel and how I should think. And it's just amazing. I mean, it's so amazing. You, you think at the times, why don't I do this all the time? Why don't I just always praise you? But it's a complicated soul. It's, a, you know, it's got a lot of little things where there's those so-and-so people that need to be resolved and issues and people. Ooh, that's, there's this stuff. Forgive everybody. Oh, bummer. Release everybody. Trust me for everything. Let it all go. It's dung anyway. Who cares? It's all rubbish. I'm worth it all. Yeah, right. You, you know, you've heard those. You've, you've thought that. And then you go, well, yeah, but that's a real issue here. And we need to deal with that. And if I don't deal with it, it's just going to continue. And somebody else is going to get hurt. So I've got to be the person to stop this thing now. So there's a million reasons we don't just go, I release, I forgive, I praise God. I, I come into agreement. I want to rise up into the joy of what you are. So, oh, my soul, why? My soul is cast down with me. See, He's, he's the secret of getting back in the parade of triumph. Because I, I want you to know that Jesus is in triumph every day. He doesn't have a bad Monday and a good Tuesday. He is in triumph. He is victorious. Everything has been completed. He is conquered. He is healed. He is delivered. He is saved. He is redeemed. He is glorified. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He is the high priest of our confession. He is totally on. His game is good. So we're not in him, we're not trying to wait for him to catch up. We're the ones on the catch up. So, so we have a conversation to identify, okay, this isn't my problem. These aren't my neighbors who are causing this. It's my soul. Remember I told you, your problem is you? There it is, right there. Soul, you're cast down. That's the problem, okay? What do I do? Therefore, I'm going to remember you from the land of Jordan, from the heights of Hermon, from the hill of Mizzah. I'm going to go back to an experience that I've had before, a place that you've made yourself known to me before. I'm going to re-engage in the truth of who you are there. Deep calls to deep at the noise of your waterfalls. As your waves' billows have gone over me, 
the Lord will command his loving kindness. It's, this is an intercessor psalm. You really, if you've lived in prayer for any length of time, you know what it feels like to be swallowed up in the depths. And you know the depth of God moving over the depth of your soul. And you just, you know like it's on the, how it feels to be on the wrong side of a set of waves. Just boom, 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 pounded. You know, those guys who surf those big waves in Hawaii, you know, in, I mean, they, they fall on the wrong place and they get, they'll go down a mile down the beach, underwater. Get it, wait, they'll find themselves on the sand without their swim trunks. It's just the power of a wave. And we're all singing, pour your waves of love over me. Sometimes they leave you naked <laughs> down the street. What happened? How did I get here? It's, we're talking about God. And, and he goes, oops, did I touch you too hard? <laughs> did I blow a little? You know, all waves are wind. Did I blow a little too much? Oh, sorry, I, I've got this thing with my nostril. <laughs> Last time I, I split the Red Sea, I just tried to... Gentle, gentle. <laughs> Turn with me to uh, 2 Timothy. We'll close with this. <laughs> See, you all know all this. I'm just here to encourage us back into the game and to practice the things we already know. But uh, this really helps me and gives me the freedom to tell my soul to get back in the game and get, get your song back and get your voice back and get your dance back and get your agreement back. Um, verse 8, chapter 2, verse 8, 2 Timothy 2, verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer the trouble of as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. That's an oxymoron. You may be called to be a liberator and find yourself in captivity. You may call, be called to be a, 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 a one who carries a, a giver of funds and find yourself in poverty. You will endure the entirety of the promise. You will go through the, the pain and the gain. You will experience the full 360 to be, uh, uh, to carry the, f the full sound. You will, and, and the higher your authority, the worse it will be for you in the natural. But the more you find God in the process, the more you will carry liberation through that experience. It's just, it's not what we want, but it's the way the kingdom works. So, and the point is, the word of God's never changed. So even though your circumstances say you're a prisoner and have no place to go or freedom to move, the word of God never gets chained. So that tells us a huge thing, that if we can continue to stay in agreement with the word of God, give voice to the word of God, that we can begin to continue to move with the word of God even when we're in, stuck in the, and can't move. So he, therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect that they may also obtain salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I promise you, everyone in this room, we are going through things that are beyond just our stuff. We're all connected. And your victory is my victory. My victory is your victory. Our victory is everyone's victory. And when God wants to bring a people to bring a, be liberators, he sends them to prison first. When he wants people to be able to release people from the, um, the, the captivity, he places them there and they find their victory. And then they bring, they govern there. It's so, we're, so if we make it, everybody makes it. So you can't stuck. And I tell the Lord this all the time. I mean, I, we, we pray for nations. We pray for, I see things moving. I see, the, you know, I, 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 there's Lebanon. I've got to pray. I, oh, I've got to, that's going to, that's going to stay and go into the beauty. You know, you see stuff and you're in stuff. And I have to apologize. I say, Lord, I am so sorry. Most of my in t life is all about me. Here you're at, you'd like me to join you in some of this government stuff. And I'm just still sorting out my feelings. But that's okay because feelings are neither right nor wrong. They just are. And they weren't to govern me.
They were just to reflect where I was and tell on me. And if they tell on me and I'd return me in my real honest state of emotion back to God, then God will deal with me and free me from me. So it's not a negative as long as I don't blame God and tell him he's unfaithful and oh, it was woe is me and if you would just fix Cammy, then my life would be well. And All those prayers are meaningless. But an honest heart never goes unrewarded. So this is a faithful saying. Here we close. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. We died with him when we received Jesus as our Lord, when we were baptized in the water, when we uh, became crucified with him. But we practically die with him through our soul going to the cross daily. Our circumstances of life conflicting. Our, oh, I can't believe I'm identified in this situation as I am. But if we die with him, we're going to live with him. So we call the life forward. If we endure with him, we'll also reign with him. That's why whatever I'm going through I'm, is training for reigning. We're being trained to reign with Christ as kings and priests. He is the king and priest. We are kings and priests. We're a kingdom of priests and a priesthood of kings. And we're practicing reigning through the things we're enduring. Now here's the, here's the clincher though. This is, this is sobering. And it's liberating because it's so powerful. If we are faithless... He remains faithful. I want you to know this, that Jesus and Father have a covenant between Father and the resurrected man, Jesus Christ. And it's an irrevocable covenant, and it is a forever. Man has been justified, elevated, up to the highest place, seated at the right hand of God. Man, the new creation, the, the last Adam, the life-giving spirit, Jesus Christ. And in this covenant... We who believe in Jesus are now joined to him as his body and enjoy all the benefits and all of the victory and all the triumph that Christ accomplished by himself. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels because he received a more excellent name than they, this Jesus, Father, inseparable, irrevocable, undeniable, covenant of victory and and you you just to take a moment and think about it, you just have let's have some pity for jesus jesus sitting there and he's just going father this is so huge i am so grateful we walked through this I, it is amazing the, the fullness the future everything we saw before creation has began every person we dreamed it's all happening and meanwhile we got little steve down here in cameo oh god you just seem to be so mean and you never do anything I ask and you always leave me last in the line I'm always the bridemaid never get married I just don't like the way you're treating me I just don't know how I can do it in the churches they don't understand me and nobody gives me a place and I just don't think I'm ever going to make it and I just don't know why you don't do something <sighs> <sighs> multiplied by what one million two million people praying in agreement and Jesus going Whoa! I know when I wrote that scripture about he who dwells with a contentious wife is better to be in a dripping faucet, but dear God, dear God, help me. Because <laughs> we're not agreeing with him. We're not believing him. We are entering into faithlessness. We all do it. I do it. Five, six times in an hour constantly just take something conflict something distracting yeah but when I do that he has a choice <sighs> I'm never gonna leave you again Papa oh the glory that we're enjoying the kindness uh, well, yeah yeah there yeah but that's not the prayers I listen to we just kind of leave that one alone okay I just <laughs> let's just soak in this joy victory triumph Let's set some more angels. Get the angels. Turn up some volume up here. <laughs> what other choices he have? Because he cannot deny himself. If he denies himself, this whole thing falls apart. All of our salvation goes down the toilet. All our healings are no longer validated. All our righteousness, our sins come flooding back in. He has to stay in agreement. 
We have completed it all. It is victorious. And I am in agreement with what we have accomplished and I am not going to come into agreement with what they're seeing. So if we, so you see the enduring is teaching us to agree with him when it's not working the way we see it. And praise is one of the fastest ways to accelerate agreement. Because you're just choosing to praise him for who he is. Not who you are or where you are. He cannot deny himself. Seriously, Jesus, I'm sure, Holy Spirit, all have come alongside me multiple times. And it's like, do you want to touch him? I, <laughs> he needs some help. I know, but every time you try to touch him, he turns and bites you. <laughs> Holy Spirit says, I, I'm, I, I'll try it. you're not going to make me feel good just because you want to make me feel good. I know what you're trying to do. You're going to make me feel good and then I'm going to give a bunch more money in the offering and I can't afford it. Whoa. Jesus, you try. I don't know. They won't, they don't. are you so sad? <laughs> sad? Why am I so sad? Take a look. Have you seen my bank account? Have you seen my, where my kids are? Have you seen America lately? Dear God, you gave me responsibility to do everything and I can't get anything done and I need you to do something now and you won't do anything. I'll tell you why I'm sad. I'm not sad. I'm mad. Whew. I know none of you pray like that. I pray honest. I tell God exactly how I'm doing. And he kind of goes, whoosh, 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 whoosh. Whoa! And he's, come on, keep talking. He's not afraid. I thank God. And then he starts coming and go, that's, that's cool. Can I, can I bring you a scripture? Would, would you consider a thought? A, a different thought. I know, I know your thoughts. Holy Spirit kind of comes around and goes, how about a little win? And then just like a little child, you know how just stubborn and I'm not going to let you comfort me. You start, oh, that feels good. Yeah, that's, that's, that is true, yeah feels good that is true that feels good that is true that feels good that is true next thing you know you're swaying and start going up and you're back in you're back in sync yay let's stand together <laughs> for a Sunday gift to Jesus and the Holy Spirit let's let him comfort us Let's let him comfort us. Ah. Go ahead, Diana. If you, Diana, if you'll come back up and just lift up your hands and let the presence of God come as a comforter in spite of the circumstances and not necessarily changing anything, but yet re-filling re, uh, everything, being a that support and strength. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. We want to love you. We want to feel you and heal you. Jesus, we love you. Because we started with praise, just start with something that is, you can give sincerely in praise to Jesus with your own however you do it thanksgiving praise extolling agreement we just Lord we want to come we want to come out of denying you forgive us for denying you forgive us that we interpret life by what we see and not by what you said sorry forgive us that we have grown impatient 
and forgive us that we have not allowed you to comfort us or console us. Yes, Lord. Give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that yes. is broken. Yes, we're green with him. Yes, we're green with him. Great are you. again with who he is and what he does you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken see let's uh, every every time it's uh, about a big let's make it about us my heart that is broken you bring light to my darkness you give hope you restore my heart that is broken you give life you are love you bring light to my darkness let's just try that personalize it Life, you are love, you bring light to my darkness, you give hope, you restore, and my heart it is broken. Great are you. In my lungs, in my lungs, so I pour out my praise. I pour out my praise. It's your breath in my lungs, so I pour out my praise to you only. It's your breath in my lungs, so I pour out.
up your eyes and take a moment. Let Jesus smile at you. Let the Father shower you with truth. Let the Spirit of God rain fresh rain and water refreshing you. Let Him comfort you, protect you, defend you, deliver you. You're here. He is your God. And He is great. And He is good. Lord, we will go out with joy today. And we will be led forth with peace. And we decree that the mountains and the hills will break forth with singing. And the trees of the field will clap their hands. Because your word does not return void. And all creation will surrender and soon liberate. (laughs) So Lord, thank you for the song again. Thank you for our song again. Yes, God. Yes, Lord.